Hey guys, about to go into round three of a Magic Origins draft. We have a chance to go 3-0 and and finish in first place. Um, and if we keep playing our Priest of the Blood Rite, that seems like it could happen. Um, don't think this is a keep. Um, we do have a three drop, but it's kind of iffy. And, I mean, we do have our Priest. <laughs> but, you know, after our three drop, I mean, if we draw a green, we have a two drop too. But I think we mulligan. This is better. We don't have any black yet. Um, I mean, it's actually not better. It's about the same, but you don't really want to go below five, so I'll keep this. We at least have a two drop for sure, like just looking at our opening hand, whereas last time we didn't have that. But Yeah, so we'll keep. We haven't played this at all, strangely enough. Um, we have two of them, and we, we had one in our hand for a while in round one, but it never really came up, um, and we haven't seen it since then, which is kind of surprising, I think. So it's kind of a tough spot to be in because we both want to draw black and draw more creatures. So, I mean, I guess at the same time, that could be a good spot. No matter what we draw, we're happy, I guess, but <laughs> it's... It shows we missing multiple things. Well, anything but a forest would have made us happy anyway. All right, we'll play our Timber Pack Wolf and end our turn. All right, Subterranean Scout it is. Okay, and now we really need black. It'd be great to have black right now to kill that scout. Um, I don't really want to trade with it right now. Um, because we have the Eyeblight Assassin, I'm much less inclined to since we know we can just kill it with that. But we do need to draw black mana to make that happen. So We have drawn really well and had some good luck in rounds one and two. And Usually there's one game in a three-round tournament where you don't have that kind of luck and looks like this is ours <laughs> so hopefully it's our only one we'll just take two if he swings nope he didn't want us to trade either which is kind of surprising all right now two go husk more of a problem oh wait well we're not doing a very good job here we'll just end the turn this turn, if he swings at the husk, I'll probably block it and make him sack that. Um, yeah, I think that's what I'll do. If you never get black, we'll be happier, but yeah, yeah, we're in trouble because <laughs> we can't really do anything about that. Now we take four. And we need double black for two of the cards in our hand, uh, and one black for the other. If we draw a swamp here, that's not a swamp, but at least it's something we can play. I may even try to go for a swamp. Or like if there are two swamps on top, I'm leaving them, you know? So <laughs> drawing a card here would be nice, but okay. Um, I'm going to put that on the bottom and leave Undercity Troll on top, because at least we can cast it. And we get to draw it, um, and I'll play Rogue's Passage, and I'll end the turn. The Troll can definitely get us back in this thing, um, even if we don't draw black, uh, because we can play it and just keep blocking and regenerating uh, until we do get the black we really want. Because we have the mana to play him and regenerate him, so... Five drop removal spell here could be a thing. Although we did get two of them, so he may have less than we do. He knows we have the troll. All right, that resoul does in fact suck. Um. Makes me think he's probably got even more ways to kill our troll in his hand. Otherwise, he probably wouldn't have played it. Um, although he knows we can just like play our troll and then regenerate it. 
Still not a swamp, but it is a big freaking creature, which is pretty relevant right now. Um, I think I just play it. Definitely sets up some awkward stuff for him if he doesn't have more removal. Like, if we block the husk here, you know, there's no way for him to save both his creatures and killer thing. He'll have to give up both of them. You know, barring a combat trick. We have a really good chance of drawing a swamp. So, it's got to happen one of these days. Like, if we'd drawn that and this scout weren't there... Things would have been much better because this Eye Blight Assassin would have wreaked havoc on my opponent. But unfortunately, we've yet to draw one. The downside, I guess, of running a Rogue's Passage right now, it, you know, it could be a swamp if I decided to run, <laughs> not to run it. But you can't look at it like that. Although it hasn't done anything for us in any of our games yet. Although I guess it ha gave us lethal one game where our opponent just scooped a prickle boar. Now we really want double black so we can kill that freaking thing. Alright. But we do have an Undercity Troll. Oh, hello. Alright, I think... Hmm. I think I play Eye Blight Assassin and kill the Scout. Maybe I should play the troll first and leave mana up to regenerate him. No, I'm going to play the assassin. And the troll. This would have been much better if we played it earlier, of course, but... What are you going to do? So we get rid of the scout. And then we play... Oh, I'm waiting for that to trigger still. And then we play Undercity Troll. Alright, we're kind of getting back in this thing. I kind of want to swing with my Conclave Naturalists. So I'm not going to block this if he swings. I might double block the Husk if he swings. No, I'm not going to do it. That way I have a good block for the husk. Because, yeah, I'll definitely block the husk with the Conclave Naturalists. Alright, um, I'm actually thinking I'm just going to chump. I think it's worth it against red. They can burn you out easily enough, but I think chumping there is fine. Um, especially because if we draw another black, we can just deal with this prickle boar. And there's a cobble brute too, but at least he dies to the eye blight thingamajig. So, okay, well that's pretty nice. Um, but not amazing. I think I just pass. Um, I have mana so that I can regenerate. I can block the Prickle Boar now and use Titanic Growth to finish it and block and regenerate here or there. Um, then he hits me for six, I guess. So, but yeah, we just keep hanging back. We got, we have to, I really, so. We got to make the game last as long as we can so that we can hit black mana. Um, all right. Not a big fan of Mage Ring Network. Um, I've never really seen it do anything. But maybe it will here. If you have the big X burn spell, that would be bad. He doesn't have spell mastery though, so it wouldn't kill us at least. I can also just block here. No, I think I do what I said. Um, block, well, hmm. 
I think I just take the husk. Yeah, like I was saying, block the cobble brute with the Undercity Troll and block this and Titanic Growth. Um, I mean, then we take six from the husk, which isn't great, but it's better than ten, isn't it? So, and we leave him with one creature and two cards in his hand. And if we ever draw black, if we can get him renowned too, he'll survive the Eye Blight Massacre that could be coming. deep in the tank. Okay, great. I'm perfectly happy with that approach as well. That lets us continue to build our forces here. Um, I will play an Elvish Visionary. I've drawn two extra cards here. Get us, get us a second swap, for crying out loud. Oh. Wild Instincts works pretty well, actually. Um, because I'm a little fearful of him removing a dude in response, I think I'm actually going to do it with my troll, which can kill him. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's fine. And go for the Wild Instincts. If he can two for one me with all his mana, then at least I keep the Naturalists, who's, I think, more important right now, mostly. Although it's not good either way. But if this does go through, I'd probably swing with my Troll afterwards, too. Because he loses a dude either way. Um... Yeah, he's thinking again, which may mean he has removal. No, he's just sacking it. Okay, yeah, we definitely swing with the troll now since he can't regenerate anyway, and he has to give up a dude either way, so let's get the troll in there. Plus, getting renowned is pretty big right now. If he wants to block with a dude, then so be it. I wonder if he just has a land in his hand and he's bluffing. <laughs> because so he's been thinking, though. It makes me think he has something in his hand. Um, okay, he's taking it, so. All right. Um, I think we go for another chump here. Not usually a big chump blocker, but in this situation, with all the combat tricks red, uh, well, it really only has one, but it's a big enough one that getting burnt out is a real possibility. So, all right. I see how it is. Jeez, we cannot buy a swamp, can we? But we do play a really annoying guy for him and keep Titanic growth up. I wouldn't be chumping if I didn't have so many cards in my hand and like ways to deal with everything if I ever draw a second swamp either. But I know if we can make the game last, we have a good chance of pulling this one out because um, we have more cards in our hand and you know ways to kill basically everything he has. So <laughs> at this point anyway. Plus Satanic Growth right now is pretty big as well. Alright, well going a little wide on us is definitely annoying. This time I think I do block if he swings with the Cobble Brute. Okay. I'm going to block like this. Um, see if he goes... He can make him an 8-8, but we can still take it out with Titanic Growth here if we want to. So that's pretty big. Um, I think we go for the block. Like, and we get it... Kill all his creatures and get um, a Titanic Growth uh, trigger. Um, oh, 
Okay. He's probably not going to sacrifice another one, but now I'm going to force him to. That makes our naturalist an 8-8. Eight, eight. So he has to sack one more creature or he dies. Uh, that's probably the best move for him. That way we both lose all of our creatures. <laughs> so we go back to sort of back to square one, but we have two cards in his hand and he has one. So... And we go back up to 15, so we're almost equal in life. So that seems pretty good. He has a trick in his hand, and it's not as good, but I'm guessing he didn't. Otherwise, he would have tried. Actually, we won't lose our Guardian Automaton. Scratch that. Because now it lives forever. Not really, but he sacked it, and so no damage got dealt to our dude. So we actually come out ahead there, I think. All right, a removal spell we can actually play, you guys. Um, in the meantime, now we start swinging with this Automaton. And do nothing else, just hold on to our removal and such. All right, Majoring Bully. Okay. Um, if we play Cruel Revival first, then we get to have Spell Mastery. So um, I'm going to swing with the Guardian Automaton. I don't think I'm going to Cruel Revival that Mage Ring Bully, at least not right away. Um, like, if he swings with it and uses a combat trick to make it hit me for e even harder, um, then maybe I do. Um, otherwise, I don't think I will. I'd rather use it on something that's a bigger threat that my automaton can't beat, which is a lot of things. Um, so, And right now, our automaton is our primary form of attack and defense, so I just take two here unless he uses a trick. And then hopefully Core Revival something bigger on the end of his turn. Looks likely. Ooh, he got a Priest of the Blood Rite too, how about that? Luckily we can Core Revival his Demon. I can't believe two were opened in this draft, that's kind of cool. So, yeah, we'll Cruel Revival first. Now we can actually hang back and let his Priest of the Blood Rite kill him, or at least do two damage to him while, um, you know, dealing with the Priest. So that's probably what I'll do. We're drawing a Swamp there makes me think a little bit differently. Um, I'm pretty sure if I swing, he's going to block, and then my Eye Blight thingy won't be nearly as effective. Um... Yeah, I think for now, I actually just leave my automaton back, let him take two on his upkeep, and then if he tries to use a trick or anything next turn when I block, um, I can use Unholy Hunger and kill whatever he's targeting with the trick. Yeah, I think I block now. All right. Now we're just drawing all lands. All right, well, we swing again. I may have to Unholy Hunger. Although I think I might actually use Eye Blight Massacre to deal with that little guy right now. Because Unholy Hunger can actually kill more things. Yeah, let's do it. If he has a way to save him, then whatever. All right. Come on, Guardian Automaton, get us there. I know you can do it. You're doing a pretty good job of it. <laughs> Another Mage Ring Bully, okay. Wow. All right, well, we swing. <laughs> our opponent and I are both kind of bricking on our top decks, I guess. That's the only reason a game like this would happen, right? Where... Okay, so next turn, if we use our uh, Rogue's Passage, we just get through for, for lethal. Um, and if he tries something, we have Unholy Hunger to gain us two life and to kill a dude. So, that seems not bad. Ooh, Thopter Engineer. Well, that's annoying, isn't it? 
Kind of wish I'd kept that uh, other card now. Hmm. I still take it here. Um, if he uses it, uh, if he hits us for three, there's no way he can burn us out, except for that X damage burn spell. Um, and he does actually have, um, but he'd be able to do that anyway. Like even if I unholy hunger, right? Like six, seven, he can do it for eight. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to take it. Okay, now I think I do use Unholy Hunger, just in case something goes wrong here on the uh, Majoring Bully. I was, maybe should have done it while he was attacking, but we'll just do it now. Um, and then we go... Like this. And if he has removal, it kind of sucks, but we do go back up to 10, and then we can play Leaf Gilder, who's just as much of a threat. All right. Well, I was talking crap about Rogue's Passage not doing anything for us yet, and there it won us the game, along with the Guardian Automaton. So that was a pretty vanilla combination there. Pretty, pretty boring. Um, what did we see? Nothing that I really have sideboard for, <laughs> so we'll just run this back out there. It's been doing us pretty, doing a good job so far. Fifteen creatures really isn't a lot in this format, and that's what we've got. Um, I guess you can kind of count Priest of the Blood Rite as two creatures, but usually you end up with like 17, 18, 19 creatures in this format. Okay, this is a good hand that we're definitely keeping. We can play our own Priest this time around. We do have only one black, but... Thornbow Archer. Well, unfortunately for him, we're going to immediately disappoint by having an elf in play, and the Thornbow Archer won't do any extra damage. So, we'll just take one from it. Yep. Take one. Another wild instincts, huh? All right. Well, we drew the other black we wanted. This is not a very intimidating combination. We had it early in another game, and it sort of stalled things out enough for us, and they did enough damage that we ended up winning, but seems less likely here. Hmm. I think I just take three right now. It's not really a good time for chumping. Wow, all the majoring bullies. All of them. And we can't draw a creature for them to run into and die, unfortunately. So, we are stuck on the back foot in this one. We can kill them, one of them with a Wild Instincts this next turn, at least, if we have to. Uh, it seems like we'll probably have to. It's part of the reason I'm not jumping is because we have two freaking Wild Instincts in our hand, and it wouldn't be very good if we didn't have a couple dudes in play. And they can kill Majoring Bully, especially if the opponent's tapped out. And it's a two for two, even if they use something to save it. Which isn't super ideal, but it's better than it can be sometimes. Um, of course, if they have burn or something, it's awful, but... Is he doing that? Two, okay. Well, that is one less elf. And it means we take seven here, but I think I still take it if we want to have any hope here. He is down to two cards. So we can kill one of those bullies with wild instincts and slow the damage down a little bit at least. Okay, well, we drew a two-drop, which isn't bad right now. I don't really have the time 
the luxury of playing it. Our priest also, with as little life as we have, isn't going to be super awesome. But So we kill one of these. Hmm. I mean, the priest actually, the majoring bully will just run into it, so it actually isn't bad. So we have, we can block before we ever take damage. So that's pretty good. Ooh, that's not so good though. So we take four here. Question is, is it worth chumping now to keep us from going to five in a deck that we know has lightning javelin? I don't think so. I think it's doing enough work against the, that, the, keeping us from taking damage that we just take four here. Which isn't great, but now we play our own Police Priest of the Blood Rite, which as long as he doesn't have his own to counter it, <laughs> is going to be a pretty big swing for us, hopefully. Um, and we end the turn. So the Majoring Bole has to smash itself into this, so we'll block there. Um, so that's good news. Another downside of Majoring Bully. Let me play... Ooh, he's making it unblockable. That's bad. So I think we might just die now since he made his Majoring Bully unblockable, because how do we get rid of our Priest? I guess we have to see... Um, our priest cannot die in, in any of the attacks that he's about to do. So we're going to take two. Which is not good on our upkeep. Um, and we take... So we can go to like one. If he has a tr trick or anything. So we block that. We block this. And we block that. Yeah. Hmm. I might have to use a removal spell on my own creature if I draw one. Why can't this make me fight my own creatures? Dang it. It's not as flexible as most removal, which actually allows for that. Oh, hey. Yeah, that might just beat us. <laughs> the unblockable on the majoring bully really took the wind out of my sails there. And he doesn't have any creature that will, like, die in a fight with my mate, with my priest. So. My priest will die next turn, though. But I can only play... I'll take one, because I can only play one blocker. Wait. Not if I kill something. I mean, I have to be hopeful again that things work out the way I want them to, but um, I think we use Wild Instincts. Here to kill the Thopter Engineer. Yeah. Will we stabilize at one life? Seems unlikely. Right, and then we play a Timber Pack Wolf. I killed that in case he played like Gear Per Gear Crafter this turn, then we would be dead because he'd have another hasty flyer. Um, that's why I killed that out of everything. And we end our turn there and hope he has to bash his Mage Ring Bully into our Priest this time. If he doesn't have to again, then well, we lose to our own Priest, but I think he's done enough good for us that. That I'm okay with that. And we can, we have, like, really good blocks right now, to be honest. So we really could turn this around, hoping... Our, as long as our opponent doesn't draw a Lightning Javelin or have Exquisite Firecraft, like, this turn could turn things around for us. Because um, all our guys, except the Visionary... Well, and the, these two will survive, is my point. Um, but nothing else will. Okay, that loses me the game. Yeah, all right. Well... On to uh, game three. All right, that loses me. Yeah, makes me take one. So, on to game three. If only we'd had one more mana for 
freaking might of the masses. <laughs> that would have been amazing right there. But we didn't have it. All right. Um, let me just send this back out there. Um, we just had awful mana problems in that game, so that really hindered us, and we still almost stabilized. I mean, the slightest bit of removal on that turn was enough to undo us, but we almost got there. We know he has Fiery Impulse now, too, which we hadn't actually seen before, so... Yeah, it seems like he's sideboarding now. I will pause until the final game begins. All right, final game, and a good hand that we will keep. Yeah, the double black has still been a problem going 8-8, eight, eight, so maybe I should have just not run the Rogue's Passage and gone 9-8, because um, we have definitely struggled to get to double black pretty consistently. Although, not in the early round, not in the first two rounds, I guess. And maybe in one of the games, I don't remember. But we're going to play an elf again, immediately after he plays his dude. So that's probably a little disappointing for him. But there he is, an elf. We can play our automaton next turn, that might be what I do. Although the wardens put pressure on him and make him keep dudes back in a way that nothing else does. And if we draw like a Wild Instincts, the Warden is even more ridiculous, so... I will take one from that Archer. And there's another one of those. So yeah, I think we play the Automaton and force the, uh... Force him to attack into my Automaton. Um... It's a pretty decent trade. Like, if he has a removal spell, it kind of sucks. But blocking, like, if he wants to use a trick to save it, is a pretty decent trade for us. He has to use two to really save it, so. These majoring bullies did end up being a big problem last game, so. It's nice to, uh, try to deal with it this time early. You should probably keyword the attacks each turn if able thing, like Berserker or something like that. That seems pretty like a pretty good keyword. It's on enough cards. There's always cards in it in every block. But I guess they don't like making things like evergreen keywords sometimes, but they made Prowess one, so. <laughs> and there's, so as long as magic has existed, there have been creatures that have to attack. I think you could correct me on that, but I'm pretty sure it's always existed. But they never thought to give it a keyword. All right, well, that's even better. Keeping our automaton is better, of course. Okay, now, question here. I think I actually play the Empath and try to get myself a land so we can play our Priest like, as soon as possible. Um, and have Unholy Hunger ready to go. And, you know, the Empath is a significant body right now, too. So I play Empath. Come on, Swamp. Swamp and Creature is what we really want to see. And we nailed it. Um, I don't even really know if I want an Auto Root Trapper this late. Uh, he can give my dudes Death Touch, but I don't think we actually do. But I guess we might as well, right? Like, we get to draw it for free and then draw a Swamp next turn, so... So it works out for me. Um... And I'll end my turn. If we just put the swamp on top, we wouldn't have drawn the dude, which could end up being relevant. Uh, so I think I like that move. Now we have lots of good blocks against this freaking archer, who also did pretty significant damage to us in the last game, when all we had was like Gnarl Root Trapper and Elvish uh, Visionary. But yeah, we definitely pound our priest of the blood right onto the table next turn and try to kill him in the air. Demolish? Dang. He really wanted that guy dead. Enough to side in Demolish. Isn't that our only artifact? <laughs> I think it might be. He was... He wanted him dead, I guess. So we blocked the Thornbow Archer if he swings. Um... 
Might even be just better to double block the Nantuko Husk, given what we know what's coming on our deck. Uh, he has to sack... Yeah, I think we just double block the Husk, actually. Yeah, I like that. Double block the Husk. If he wants to kill both, he has to sack his other guy, and then his guy still dies. So, I think that works for me. If he doesn't do that, then he loses one guy, kills one of our guys, and also keeps this, which might be what he wants to do. Nope. He wants to wipe out both our boards, which I'm okay with. All right. And look at that. We drew a swamp. What a surprise. And now that the board's clear, it's nice to play this guy. The good news is if he plays his, we can counter it with Unholy Hunger, so... He's been a bit reckless with those husks in this game. All right. Well, I like the look of that. Um, I think we just swing with both. So that's seven. And then we play, well, maybe we just play Gnarl Root Trapper and keep up on Holy Hunger. Yeah, let's do that. Seems good. Um, we do not have Spell Mastery this time around, but that's okay. If he tries to use a trick or something, I'll just take five um, if he doesn't use a trick and then kill whatever blocker he plays and then swing at him for eight. Um, okay, well... That's okay with me. Hmm. Now nah, I think it's better to take five. Then we take two, though. Now nah, whatever. I'm gonna kill him. Um. I hope he. I mean, you know he can't play his own dude this turn. So. So now we go to seventeen. And he goes. To to a lot lower than that. Ooh. And then we have the Rogue's Passage Valoron Warden combo to back things up if that becomes necessary. So smash in for seven. Um, our hand is empty now, but it's going to be hard for our opponent to come back. A flurry of creatures or removal, I guess, could do it. But we also get to draw a card if our Valoran Warden gets uh, Renown and can go crazy from there. Opponent is thinking. We do have Lethal basically any way you slice it. Because uh, he doesn't have double black to play his own big Priest of the Blood Rite. It's going to be really... Frustrating for our opponent if he has it in his hand and can't cast it, <laughs> but we've had that problem. So, yeah, he's we we take it. Looks like he's conceding. All right, we did it. Um, so we went three zero in another one. Um, so it's pretty good. It's a pretty fun format. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, there'll be another draft video next.